Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome. Welcome to Law Explaining the Interwebs. I am your host, Nick Ricada of Ricada Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota. How are you? How are you doing this fine evening, my friends? Oh, okay. <coughs> oh, excuse me. It is, uh, it is a day. <laughs> it is a day. I have mentioned before, I, um, I despise, I despise December, but it's not December anymore. It's now January, but it's like, I just, whew, winter, man. Winter, I hate it. I hate it. Uh, I have low energy in the winter. And yes, I know, I, I, before you tell me everything about the wonders of vitamin D and everything, yeah, I, I know, okay? I'm just telling you, like, I got all that stuff, but I'm also just telling you, like, winters, man. I just hate them. So anyway, so here we are. Uh, we're going to have kind of a relaxed stream tonight. Maybe. Probably. I'm going to punctuate the relaxation of the stream with some Jefferson's Ocean Aged Cask Strength Whiskey. Now, I have tasted this before, but I haven't done an official whiskey review. If you're not familiar with my official whiskey reviews, they are probably the absolute worst whiskey reviews on the planet. So, prepare yourself if you're new here. That is, that is likely to be the case today as well. Uh, why do you live in a cold, frozen shithole? You know, so many times I ask myself this question, but that's, that's where we are. Uh, Little Rocks, yeah, I did, I did get a haircut the other day. Um, and, uh, and I then, I fell asleep earlier today, and I didn't really do a good job of combing it back down, so it's a, it's mildly unruly. Mildly unruly. But, um, do I like scotch? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Uh, yes, I like scotch. My favorite is, my favorite go-to scotch is Lagavulin 16. Um, I have some different choices for different occasions and different price points. But if I were to have an everyday, well, not really every day, because that'd get really, that'd get unreasonably expensive. But if I were going to have a, you know, kind of a go-to scotch bottle, it would be Lagavulin 16. That's my, uh, that is my kind of go-to on scotch. But lately, because of the increased tariffs on scotch, I've been drinking more bourbons and rye, and I like them quite a bit too. So, you know, it's, it's all in how it goes. Um, what was I looking for? I was looking up at something. Someone asked uh, if I watch Project Veritas, and uh, no, I don't generally, but we are going to cover uh, Project Veritas' video today. James O'Keefe tweeted it out. We'll be watching it, listening to it. I'll be talking about what I think about it. Um, that, is, that is coming. Uh, we've got some other news stories. We've got the first woman to be executed in the United States uh, in 70 years, in, uh, at the federal level, anyway. Uh, I mean, like, Chicago executes women all the time, but I'm talking about the federal level. Uh, the federal government had an execution of a woman, the first in 70 years. We're going to talk about her crime in a truly uplifting uh, discussion because everybody wants or well, everybody, there was a big push to uh, remove the death penalty from said lady. So obviously, uh, there was a big push to have the death penalty removed from her, and we're going we're gonna to just discuss her, her crime. And uh, we'll see what you guys think. Like, should she be executed or not? And this one went up to the United States Supreme Court. And as with other death penalty cases, the Supreme Court declined to intervene. 
So, um, again, you guys can make up your own mind on whether or not she should have been executed and whether, you know, we could do the gender equality thing too. Should anybody have been executed for this particular crime? So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do that. Like if she were a man, should she be executed too? I mean, maybe it's just cause she's a woman. Um, you know, th that's like the meme headline of the day would be something like, uh, Federal executions resumed women most affected. 100% of females on death row have now been executed by the government. Bam! There's the headline. CNN, hire me. I will write your headlines all day. 100% of women on death row have been executed by the federal government. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So that is, uh, that's coming. Um, I do have an announcement to make about, uh, live streams. And I'm going to be making this announcement over the next several shows. Uh, I want, I want to make sure people see this, but we'll start it tonight and I'll, I'll probably, I'll talk about it now and then I'll do it again later as people have filtered in. Okay. So, um, the live stream archive is just like having the playbacks for live streams up is just not helpful. I don't, I don't know how to say, it. I hate YouTube for this. I do because it would be so much better. It'd be so much better if there was a way to easily segregate things into two places on the same channel, but there just isn't. There isn't a way to do it. And we have uh, all sorts of um, new people watching the shorter videos and that's helping the channel grow and all of that stuff, which is great. And I love doing the live streams. Like this is the part of it that I really like to do is to hang out with you guys and talk. Like, uh, oh, there's a guy Midnight in Exile. And I've seen him on this channel before. Him, her, I don't know. I've seen them on the channel before, uh, you know, in comments and stuff. Maybe they watch live. I don't know. But they asked on the last episode, they're like, Jesus, do you intentionally digress all over the place and waste your viewers' time on purpose? It took like 30 minutes to get to the lead topic. Well, I can answer that. I can answer that. Uh, simply. Yes, of course. Of course I do it on purpose. This is a live show and it's a conversational show. It's a different form of entertainment and engagement than what's traditionally happened, right? Like this isn't, this isn't you tuning into a news program. I mean, you may get news from it or stories or commentary or analysis, all the things you could find on various, uh, different types of entertainment and infotainment. But YouTube is wholly different. There's a chat. We get to interact and talk. Like we can converse with each other in real time. And so it's, it's not the same thing. And if, if you want like a straight shot into uh, a particular topic, you're probably not going to get it unless I have a guest with a limited amount of time and we need to get right into something. It's just not how it's going to go. Um, it's, it's more. Of a, of a different approach. So yeah, uh, do, do I intentionally digress and tangent? Yes, of course. It's a conversation. It's a chat. And uh, just because I'm the only one vocally speaking doesn't mean there's not back and forth. So that's, that's how this goes. And that's how it's going to stay. Because I can't, I can't do the thing where like I sit there and, and this is not a slam at anybody. Like everybody does things in their own way. But I can't do the thing where you just sit there and go on with your topic and like randomly pull up comments and stuff like Viva do <coughs> Viva and Barnes do that on their show. And that is great for them. It's not, again, it's not a criticism. They use StreamYard and they, they pull up uh, chats that come in um, either super chats or whatever and, and present them, but they don't always like read through and address them. It's not how I do things. And that's, that's fine. Uh, they have a bigger live stream. <laughs> Go, go, go deal with it. That's great. Uh, and I love their success. It's awesome. But, um, 
but yeah, mine is mine is rambly and ranty and uh and that's I think that's why a lot of people keep coming back every time. So uh yeah. But uh but that's, you know, anyway. So that's all there. But the 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 issue is the playbacks the playbacks confuse everything and by everything I mean like the algorithm and everything. So it pushes content in weird directions. And so I'm about 90% committed to the idea of moving the playbacks, not the live stream itself. The live stream isn't moving, but the playbacks for the live stream to a separate channel like Nerdrotic does. Okay? So that is the uh that is the idea there that there would be a a live stream channel and then that way and this is, you know, this has a twofold sort of benefit. People who don't like the short videos that are all about politics and all this stuff is can ignore them completely because the live stream stuff will be in one spot and it's pure, uh, you know, state where they will go like I will record them and then I will upload them over there. And that'll be that. And anybody who wants to watch them can call it, uh, can watch it. Dumbass, call it Ricada Law Archive. Well, <laughs> funny you should mention that. Uh, I wonder what would happen if you would go to YouTube.com and search for Ricada Law Archive. Oh, you won't find it. What's, well, what's it called? Hold on. Oh, it's just Ricada Archive. I'll probably, I should probably change that, but. If you actually search for Ricada Archive, you won't find it there either, but I'll, when it's ready to, it's there. It actually exists. But when it's ready, I'll, uh, I'll link it. <laughs> I made it a long time ago. Um, let's see, where did it go? But the search is all messed up because, uh, oh, and I can't really, oh, I can do it on, I can do it on here. Hold on. I can't switch over to it on my studio account. That'd be a disaster. Uh, here we go. Ricada archive. It has no subscribers. But uh, no videos, no subscribers, nothing are there yet. But it, it does exist. Um, and uh, yeah. So anyway, that is, that is the most likely outcome at this point. I also am pretty much going to, I'm pretty much decided on uh, having the backup channel on unauthorized.tv or a backup channel. I don't know if it's going to be the sole one, but uh, unauthorized will, will likely be the home of that. Now, unauthorized, let me tell you, is a uh, description or is a subscription service, but I've been talking with them and asking them because what I want, I don't want to add a subscription service. I want to offer people an opportunity to replace any current subscription service with unauthorized TV. So um, that, is, that is the goal. And one of the things I've asked them for is uh, the big thing that my Patreon has, which is um, the uh, Discord access. So I want people to be able to go to unauthorized TV and get the same sort of thing that Patreon would offer and then I, I would love to move off of Patreon entirely uh, and onto an alternative platform. But that's, uh, that's what I would like. So uh, that's, that's in the works. Um, but then, yeah, there's probably uh, another backup that I'll do as well. Um, hey, what's up, John West? How's Wisconsin doing? Uh, there's, yeah, Razor Fist is on unauthorized TV. And the cool thing about that place, from what I hear, is that if you subscribe to one person, 
uh, you actually get access to like all other things or something. I don't know. It's weird. Something like that. Yelling at you to open a locals page. I don't even know what locals is. Like I've heard of it, but I don't know what it is and I don't care. Uh, I will probably do um, some other backup to like Utreon or something like that. Uh, but, you know, you know how I am about making decisions. Did you get your money back? Yes, yes, sorry. Uh, I've, I've mentioned it a couple times. You may have missed it. My Twitch, uh, Twitch did nothing to help me, by the way. Uh, and the brief backstory on this, if you don't know, my Twitch account was hacked, um, several days ago and, uh, someone in two minutes stole $10,000 from me through Twitch. Uh, Twitch did absolutely nothing to help me recover that money. I got it all back through my bank. Um, my bank, uh, my bank went ahead and, you know, I filed fraud charges or filed a fraud report and my bank returned the money. And uh, Twitch is like, oh, your bank did it. So we don't care. Like Twitch doesn't care that $10,000 went to random Turkish streamers who weren't streaming all at the same time. It just miraculously went to them. But, you know, it's not, I guess it's not, no longer my money. It just was for like two days. Uh, so, but I, I did manage to get it back. How did they steal it? They took your bank account info? No, so my credit card was linked to my Twitch account. Because if you, like, want to do a subscription to anybody or whatever, you have to have a way to pay for it. And I had gifted a couple subscribers to different people. I don't really subscribe to anybody on Twitch. Uh, like, I follow some people, but I don't really subscribe to them, um, typically. But I gifted some to other people. And so my credit card was linked up. Or my debit card, I should say, was linked up. And so they went on, and then they used that to, uh, within just... Like I said, just two minutes, they made $10,000 worth of purchases of Twitch's currency and then distributed that out. And the only reason I knew about it was because I got a bunch of emails within that two-minute period, and I bolted down to my computer and, uh, and, and de-linked it and changed my password. But I had two-factor authentication and everything. Um, and no, it's not through text messaging. They did not clone my SIM card. The chat is very helpful, but I've, I've been through all of the stuff. I don't know how they hacked the 2FA, but they did. So it was great. It was great. So. Anyway, fun times. Uh, so Cormoran, gifted subscribers, sounds sketchy. So Twitch has followers, which are like YouTube subscribers, are followers on Twitch. And then subscribers are you pay uh, for a month and you get access to like emotes and stuff like that. That's how, that's how Twitch uh, creators monetize their content, either through subscribers or their in, in-house currency of bits. So when I say I gifted subscribers, you know, I bought a month subscription for a couple people uh, and stuff. And, and, then, and then I was hacked. Okay. So anyway. Uh, but yes, I got all my money back and Twitch can do whatever it wants. That's how it goes. Uh, <laughs> uh, we've got, okay, Sixth Floor Madness says, There once was a girl called Louise whose pubes hung down to her knees. Her crabs got together and knitted a sweater so in the winter her flaps wouldn't freeze. Dude! Why is that the first chat of the night? Like, why is that the first thing that shows up? That was horrifying. Stormcrow900 says, For levity, can you review the case of the Columbus, Ohio police arresting and tasing an ATF agent who also stole wine from Kroger? Video is great, and the ATF agent is suing the police for unconstitutional policing. Oh, that sounds beautiful. I'll have to find it. I'll have to find it. Um, Blaine 20 says, if you started the main topic immediately late and gay coomers would have to stay lagged behind the live convo. Any new swag designs forthcoming? Many capital rioters were anarchist sesh and Tifa posing as MAGA, by the way. Oh, we've got that story too. 
we've got the story about how a CNN linked person was one of the people storming the building as well. Uh, okay, so that's the case number. Oh, chat, you're moving too fast. Uh, we're going to start the whiskey review in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and find this case on Pacer and uh, and star it. Oh, it's not, uh, that case didn't work. Okay. You need to learn the joys of slow mode? No! Oh, God. No, like, YouTube likes interaction in the chat. Slow mode is terrible for that. So, uh... Oh, it's two, just 220. We'll find it here. Search. Come on now. Well, it doesn't like this case number, so uh, Stormcrow, can you email it to me or something, and I'll find it that way? Uh, Burke et al. versus City of Columbus et al. Okay. All right. So this is, uh, oh, this is just filed, huh? That's amazing. Well, just filed in December. Okay. I've got it. I've got it now. All right, let me get this whiskey out. So this is uh, Jefferson's Ocean, aged at sea, cask strength. It's a blend of straight bourbon whiskeys, so not the gay ones. Uh, very small batch. This is 56% alcohol. It doesn't say anything about it on the bottle. You know, some bottles actually have uh, like a, a story on them or like the boss hog for example, has like a whole freaking book written about this particular, uh, boss hog. So, uh, this one I'm going to do soon, by the way, maybe even this month, but I might, I might have a friend join me for the review of the boss hog or something. I don't know. I don't know what to do with it yet, but it's, uh, I want to make that one a little bit more, you know, special or celebrate or something. So this is bottle number 06990. 69, dudes. Uh, so that is what we've got here. Okay, so uh, like, like a lot of cask strength whiskeys, the smell that you tend to pick up is a lot of, it's a lot of uh, alcohol, like, a, you know, there's a high concentration of alcohol and it does kind of burn out some of the other smells. I got to be careful when I dip my nose into the glass to smell it because I'll actually touch the liquor. <laughs> this one has just this is a potent a potent smell the shuggy you sort of miss the announcement but i'm gonna do it again don't worry and there will be many more like many of the very similar style of the announcements to come over the next several days okay so this is uh yeah this has a harsh alcoholic smell to it it just does 
There's not much else you can say about it. Ooh. Okay. When it's sitting on your tongue, very tingly, a nice, uh, a nice high alcohol burn to it. Um, really kind of permeates the mouth, but it's not, uh, it's not overly flavorful while it's in your mouth. I think there's, you're just getting a lot of alcohol and I've had, uh, I've had higher alcohol concentrations. Um, you know, I've had 65% alcohol, uh, whiskeys and they have more flavor in the mouth than this one. But when you swallow it, there's a very, very pleasing bourbon, uh, heavy, you know, the heavy corn concentration on bourbon. There's a very, very pleasing bourbony taste when you swallow, which I like. I got to get the breathe just a second. Okay, breathing out after drinking is very subtle. It's not fiery or alcoholy. And on the second sip, I'm picking up a lot more of the oak that's in the uh that's from the barrel, right? That aging process. Uh I get a lot more of that on the second sip. So that's that's actually good. I'm I the second glass is going to probably be even better. You got to sometimes uh, lubricate the, uh, the taste buds. So it was, um, that's, it is, it is pleasing. So the idea of this Jefferson's ocean aged whiskey is they take small barrels, small batches of, uh, you know, of, of their blend, the Jefferson's blend. And then they put it on, they take the barrels and they put them on a boat and they just, drive this boat around in the ocean for a while. You know, however many years. And the idea behind that is, I guess, and I, this is probably fake, but this is what they say, is that as the uh, boat is like rocked and moved around by the waves and its motion, that the whiskey is agitated inside of the barrel. And that, more of the whiskey itself is coming into contact with more of the barrel. It almost is like creating a convection current sort of idea. So it's circulating the whiskey in the barrel. Now, of course, the obvious trade-off of this would be that the whiskey itself must necessarily spend less time in contact with the barrel. I don't know if this matters at all, but this is how they bill it. Literally, everyone says Jefferson's o Ocean is completely overhyped. They can do that without a boat. I mean, they can, but who cares? It's fun. That's the thing with whiskey. Whiskey is meant to be fun. But the other thing about, uh, about, you know, this sort of idea is that now this doesn't make sense, but some people would suggest that the salt or whatever of the sea also kind of infuses itself into the whiskey. And you see this not just with Jefferson's Ocean, but you see it with, um, you know, certain scotches. Uh, like the Islay scotches or the, the Isle of Skye scotches, where they suggest that the, you, know, you can kind of taste the salty uh, nature of the air around that area. So, but these are sealed barrels, so probably not is what I'm saying. All right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of... It's, uh, this is the thing. Whiskey is a marketing game of epic proportion proportions. Uh, and so, so yeah, I mean, you, you got to take what they say with a grain of salt. I just like saying what they say about it because it's, you know, it's, it's adds mystique and mystery to it. I mean, think about this on balance. This is a liquid that they shove in a barrel and then put in a closet for like 12 years. It's weird. If you did that with anything else, it'd be strange. You'd be like, okay, what's your weird sexual fetish? And then, I like old liquid. Uh, but with, 
with whiskey and bourbon and scotch, it's just kind of normal. That's what you do. Um, but, uh, yeah. So whoever asked, do I like rye? Yes. I like rye whiskey quite a bit. And, uh, also what was the other thing you asked? You just asked it. Oh, I've, I've not done the bourbon trail, like by physically going to Kentucky, but I've had several whiskeys from the bourbon trail. Um, uh, I had a really nice rare Michter's. Oh, that was good stuff. But, uh, Oh, that's perfect. Sponsor a special line of rye called Gamers. So when you toast, you can say Gamers Rise Up. <laughs> uh. So anyway, um, I'm so far I'm a big fan of this uh, Jefferson's Ocean. I think I think it's a little overpriced because it's like seventy five bucks a bottle, and I don't know why. I mean, probably because they put it on a boat ship it around but um it's a little overpriced for the value but it's not bad i mean it's a good whiskey it's tasty um all right what's my take on buchanan's the little wait is it the little green bottle i have one somewhere hold on Buchanan's Deluxe, right here. This one's empty. This is an empty, but uh, yeah. You know what? This was one of the most surprising bottles of scotch I've ever had. My uh, barber, my barber gave it to me. Uh, my barber is a Mexican fellow who is uh, hilarious. I like him quite a bit. He's also one of the hardest working people I know. Uh, and, and, uh, hats off to him. You got to take your hat off to him so he can cut your hair. Uh, he says that this is what Mexicans drink for scotch. And as, as, uh, you know, my Mexican barber, I fully believe him on that. It's really good though, because it's a cheap scotch. Uh, you know, it's, it's inexpensive. Um, you know, all scotch is a little bit pricey because of the tariff, but it's inexpensive, uh, but it's really smooth and it's really tasty. I just like it. It's a good, it's a good scotch, especially for the price. But, uh, anyway, so it's good times. Uh, the brand again is, uh, Buchanan's Deluxe. So it's got like a ball. It's got a screw top. It's got a screw top and a ball stopper in it with like a, <laughs> like an olive oil thing. It's such a weird. Quirk. I dropped the cap. It's such a weird, quirky sort of uh, thing, but you know, it works for him. Ever thought about trying to homebrew some mead? No, that sounds like work. Um, okay, so we'll get we'll get to uh, a second glass of this in a little bit. Um, uh, my whiskey reviews go like this. So the first the first shot of it, I take you know sips at a time, um, kind of seeing how the sips go as as it settles in, uh, and and then the second after that, I take a shot of the whiskey to see if that's worth doing. The cap system is shit. It is. <laughs> it is. You're right. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I usually do like a four-step process for drinking, for drinking a new whiskey. Uh, and I recommend this if you're not like a veteran whiskey drinker. I would recommend this to help you because some people are like, oh, whiskey's too harsh or this whiskey is too harsh or the, you know, it's too alcoholy. The four-step process is you got to smell it. You know, you get your nose in the glass and smell it. 
Then you take the sip into your mouth and let it sit on your tongue and kind of flow around in your mouth. Not like swish and gargle, but just let it kind of roll around over your tongue and under your tongue. And then you swallow with purpose and then you breathe out. It's a nice, slow process and it takes away a lot of the sting and burn of, drink, or of drinking whiskey, especially if you're not used to it. And if you like just take whiskey and try and chug it down and you're not used to it, it sucks. So doing that process is a, is a good way to kind of get yourself into it. So I always start with that. But I just took a, just a sip of this one. And in that one, you know, like I said, you, you got my impressions first time. But I'm just taking a straight sip of this. That is a preferable experience, which is rare. Usually I like it the other way. Usually I like to take it slow this one i like it hitting hard in the back of my throat immediately uh so no that's 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 good stuff uh break contact two says i was hoping you could do a stream sometime maybe a big brain panel on chevron deference and the likelihood of getting it overturned or of it getting overturned uh maybe I'd have to ask around if anybody's familiar. I don't know what that is off the top of my head. Uh, Karn. Karn. Is that, is, that, is that a reference to Karn Carby from Ender's Game? Karn says, I'm looking to start a whiskey bourbon collection slash cash. What would you suggest I get to start top five? I already have Maker's Mark, Bullet, and Hibiki Harmony, which is very, very nice. Well, of those three, the Hibiki Harmony is, is the best one. Um, I'm not a fan of Maker's Mark. I think it's a little too sweet. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, top five. You got to get a Lagavulin 16. This is my opinion. You got to get a Balmore 15 Darkest. Those two are important. Um, you've got to get yourself. Let's see here. What else do I have? that is accessible to everybody. Cause that's the other thing. Uh, Cause some of the things I have that I really like, you can only get in certain places. If you're in Tennessee, are you in Tennessee? Karn, where are you? Where are you at fam? Um, get yourself a bottle of 1792 is good. Uh, yeah, writer's tears. Little writer's tears. Look at this. Look at this thing. These are little writer's tears bottles. Uh, writer's tears is great. Good stuff. Uh, East Coast. Not East Coast. Okay. Um, all right. I won't recommend the peg leg porker. Uh, I would actually highly recommend uh, this Amroot. If you can find this, single malt peated Indian whiskey. This stuff is brutal. This is really good. Uh, Angry Baneling hates it. Um, but that's, you know, I don't know how easy that is to find. Uh, okay. Let me, let me get back to focusing here. So we've got Lagavulin 16. We've got Balmore 15. We've got the um, 1792. I recommend the cask strength or full proof, I should say, full proof. Um, then I would recommend for number four, get yourself a Dalwini. See if you can get the distiller's edition or the, uh, it's technically a 15 year, but the 15 year distiller's edition is better. Okay, get yourself a Dalwini 15 year or distiller's edition. And then uh, get yourself a Whistle Pig 10 year, which is probably the best bang for your buck on Whistle Pig. So that's, that's what I would suggest. 
Why are you looking around like a condor? Okay, because uh, I have, I have a bunch of empty bottles up on my shelves of things I've, of, I try to keep one of every different type of bottle that I've drank. Uh, see, we've got we've got bottles on that shelf, and then there's there's bottles on the other shelf too over there. So. Uh, those are all, uh, what I would suggest for now. Um, I mean, there's, there's any number of really good. I like Talisker. I do. Don't get Talisker Storm. Talisker 10 years. Great. But, uh, May May, what's up? Office tour win when it's not a disaster. I'm actually... So some people have expressed uh, discontent at, at the uh, background changing. It's because I want to redo my office like pretty dramatically. And I have to get some stuff out of here. And I want to like, I want a, I want a whiskey stave wall where uh, like barrel staves from whiskey barrels are put into a pattern and made into the, the wall behind me. I want that covering the entire wall. Um, but I haven't been able to find that right now. So, uh, but I want, I want a more like neutral background in general. Um, and, and so I'm working on stuff like that. So I don't like the big bare patches of white. So that's why I put the flag up. Uh, behind me as well is I don't like the big patches of white wall. Uh, I'm anti-white on this channel. I don't know if you know that, but I I am opposed to the whites because they bring misery and suffering to the non-whites everywhere they go. Looks more like you're trying to be legal eagle. What with my Warhammer books? <laughs> All these are Warhammer books. Oh God. Yes, Warhammer books and a flag. Like, uh, legal, legal. Um, yeah, I actually have some more Warhammer books up in my room that I still need to bring down, but, uh, yeah. And I might, I might even switch it up to do two different recording areas. One for, um, you know, one for, uh, some content and one for another content. I don't, I don't know. All this stuff's a pain in the ass, by the way. Where's my YouTube play button at? I have a meeting with my guy tomorrow, so I'm going to ask him. Okay. Jefferson's Ocean. I'm going to say this. Just taking sips and drinking it, that is fan damn -tastic. That is a great, great, just like, take a sip whiskey, which is kind of rare. Um, okay. That was a lot from Karn there. Bad Vibe says Nick's nose gets drunk before he does. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Bad Vibes also says if you enjoy being tortured, you will like military special or Fuyu. Yeah, Fuyu is garbage. One of the worst whiskeys I've ever tasted. The, whatever. I heard that they have a better Fuyu, um, but it is, it is awful. Whatever I had was just really bad, um, which is like the cheap stuff. Uh, and military specials a little bit rough, but Fuyu is worse. America bourbon was also worse. Uh, okay, let's do this. And remember, this is, I promise nothing with this show. This is me hanging out with you guys and chatting. Um, I had a really... Uh, I've had a really long couple of days. So, a uh, brief, brief story. Uh, we have, we have um, some assistance because the children require lots of driving. And as you guys may remember, uh, in December, earlier in December and before in November and all that stuff, um, before I was doing uh, the daytime content, really, I wasn't able to do it as much because 
I was busy dealing with kid stuff and, and which is great. But so we, we got someone to help out with that. Uh, and they have been a massive blessing in our life by being able to help us uh, just by taking the pressure off, by being able to transport our kids around and stuff like that when we need them to go places. And so that's opened me up to do more stuff during the day. Well, uh, our person had some personal stuff happen, and so they haven't been around as much the past couple days, and then I've had a bunch of stuff to do. And so it has been like the past couple days, I'm like just dragging because <laughs> I got used to not having to do as much. It was great. It was great. Uh, Drew as like a nanny. Like a nanny. But, um, you know, like not, I, I don't know. I don't know how to describe them. They're wonderful. They're wonderful. So, uh, so anyway, it's just with, with having five kids with different activities all over the place, like you just end up driving a lot. So, uh, but, but anyway, so the, but the past couple of days, um, I have been, I have been without and it's like, oh man, <laughs> just straining to get through the day. But, uh, so I promise nothing with this show. Um, I want to do this. This is, oh, look at that. That's perfectly aligned. Uh, this is my Minds account. The official one is at Ricada Law. It is up and running. I think I have already surpassed my old Minds account. So thank you guys for subscribing to that. Minds is my current Twitter alternative until they are the new voice of the alt white and then they get thrown off the internet. But Minds has been around for a while and has hosted uh, the evil. The evil monstrosity that is Carl Benjamin Sargon of Akkad uh, has inhabited minds and they haven't been taken off the internet forever. So um, show announcements will be on minds uh, as well as on, um, you know, Twitter for now. I don't, I would like to remove myself from Twitter eventually. So I would love it if you guys would uh, check out alternative platforms i think twitter's absolute garbage and we're gonna jump into that uh we're gonna jump into that jack dorsey uh veritas twitter video in just a minute um so that uh so yeah i would i would much prefer i see a bunch of you subscribing right now and voting up stuff <laughs> thank you i would really really appreciate it if you guys who are on minds uh, you know, make sure and throw upvotes and stuff and, and give feedback on what's on there um, and interact with it because uh, I, I really do hate Twitter. Like, my, my personal goal would be to switch all, like, commentary over to Minds as well as show announcements and only have show announcements on Twitter for the few people who just are there. Like, they don't want, you know, anything else, and that's fine, but I... My Twitter, the more I talk on Twitter, the closer I am to being absolutely and immediately banned from it. So, uh, you know, any, any interaction on Minds would be wonderful. And I think it's a really easily accessible platform. And it seems to have a responsive interface uh, that works well. So um, look for that because I, be, I will be off of... Uh, you know, I'll be making fat jokes on mines, you know, before too long. I also hate, hate the Twitter communities of absolute bigotry, like law Twitter and stuff like that. Just the, the nasty, ugly environment of that with no joviality or soul in it at all. So, uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just not a fan of what Twitter is. But um but that's so anyway, uh look at Jesus. Lots of you guys are subscribing and commenting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh but yeah, so join me over there. Okay, so that'll be the these are part of the announcements and stuff where where you can find people as we deal with stuff like this.
Do you guys know that Twitter banned 70,000 people in one day the other day? All quote unquote QAnon account. QAnon, uh, Q boomers, or whatever they want to call them. They banned 70,000 accounts. It's crazy. How wise is faking your death and skipping hearings? Is that what? Don't. Please tell me Baked Alaska did not try to fake his death. Do I have a Bitcoin donation address? No, I don't. However, uh, I should mention this. I don't mention this at all normally, and I should. But I have Brave, uh, and I am a Brave verified creator. So if you are a Brave user, and you, like, use... Uh, basic attention tokens or whatever um like that supports me i actually get that from brave i need to add it to my twitch channel so if you guys like brave i'm on there and i'm i'm actually in the process of switching uh my browser primary use to brave because uh i just google's pissing me off in general but yeah uh, anyway, so yeah, if you guys like brave, you know, brave is an option. I, I strongly recommend it. Yeah. Don't use Firefox by the way. Um, Firefox, Mozilla, Mozilla is garbage. They can eat all, all the shit in the world. And I know that many of you do, uh, like, I don't know who, but I know people do support me on brave. And just so you know, I do get that, and I really appreciate it. Thank you for doing that. All right. We're going to do a shot of this Jefferson's Ocean, and we're going to listen to Jack uh, fillet himself, because that's what Jack does. Mither and Emra says, Twitter is where all the kids who are bull bullied in high school go so they can make themselves feel better by acting exactly like they're bullies. <laughs> yeah. And what's, what's in it for us bullies? Huh? What's in it for us? I just want to go somewhere and call people fat. That's it. All right, here we go. Whoa. Whoa. This is the opposite of most whiskeys I review. When I normally uh, take a shot of a whiskey that is relatively, you know, that is above cheap. The idea of a shot is typically to just put it down, you know, get the job done. That was delightful. That was an absolute joy to take a shot of. It was smooth. It doesn't burn. I mean, a, a, little, a little bit, but it doesn't like make you want to... Oh my gosh, that was... I don't know what to do. Yeah, Keanu... Whoa. I was taking a shot of Jefferson's Ocean Aged at Sea, Cask Strength Bourbon Whiskey, and I was like, whoa, this is pretty good. Anyway, uh, that was, I mean, that was shockingly good. I strongly recommend doing that. Uh, Mithrin Emrys, I just read that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> my Keanu impression is always from Bill and Ted though. Like it, it just can't, I can't do like modern Keanu, like John Wick stuff. It's, it's always going to be that old, uh, like goofy Keanu from, uh, Bill and Ted and parenthood. All right, here we go. Let's listen to what Jack has to say. First of all, format manifestation. Have you noticed that Jack 
Dorsey talks like a catch you next Tuesday. I mean, just the way he speaks is something that normal people can't replicate. He, I, he might be a replicant or something. Something is wrong with this man. He cannot just talk. Oh, God, I hate him. Oh, it's muted. Son of a... Okay, we'll, we'll start over. Here we go. Here we go. I got, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Here we go. You should always feel free to express yourself in whatever format, manifestation feels right. Veritas. I intend to do a full retro, as I said in my note. It is going to take some time. Um, and then the, the other thing, just to just to close out a little bit, we, you know, we, we are focused on one account right now, but this is... I assume the retro is like a retrospective of all of the mistakes Twitter has made in leading up to the Capitol riots. No, I'm just kidding. Of course not. Uh, the retrospective will be all of the ways that they didn't censor Donald Trump. It's going to be much bigger than just one account. And it's going to go on for much longer than just this day, this week, or the next few weeks. It's going to go on beyond the inauguration. We have to expect that. We have to be ready for that. So the focus is certainly on this account and um, how it ties to real world violence but also we need to think much longer term around how these dynamics play out over time um, i don't believe this is going away anytime soon and the moves that we're making today uh, around uh, QAnon, for instance is one such example of a much broader approach um, that we should be looking at um, and, and going deeper on so Remember that Twitter is founded on the idea that you should be able to express yourself however you want, but you can't because if you, if you're like, and I, I'm not a Q and on person in any way. I get like, I get accused of it when I do videos or like I cover a video on Linwood and people are like fake Q and on attorney. And I'm like, lol, what? Like, <laughs> okay, I guess you didn't watch the video. That's fine. But, uh, but. Like, so I don't, I don't care about QAnon or whatever. I've never really uh, bought into the whole thing, but other people can. I also don't care if they do. It, like, that's, uh, why do, why, why are we so worried about what people think? Like, why, why are we so worried that someone might think something that we don't like? Why, where, where did that start? Like, ah, that person thinks something that I think is wrong. No, some internet police, go, go get that man. Go get him. He's thinking something I think is wrong. Go get him now. When did that? When did this happen? Uh, endless twenty six forty six is unrelated, but remember the not my president riots from four years ago. I feel like there was worse than anything we've seen recently. Two faced nature of some people bugs the hell out of me. Also, ever had legend bourbon? I haven't had legend. I don't think unless i had it at doug to naples house which i might have it's uh it's great like the, the it's the karening this is the problem the karening if you saw my um if you saw my kyle rittenhouse video today and if you didn't i would recommend watching it of course i'm biased but um if you saw my kyle rittenhouse video today uh kyle's recent bond modifications are the result ultimately of a Karen, a male Karen, I believe, who saw him at a bar and was like, that's, that's Kyle Rittenhouse. He's having a beer. I can get him in jail. Ooh, I want to get him in jail. I'm going to call the court right now. Click, 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 click. Hello, court. I'd like to report a crime. That's what happened. That's actually what happened. It's so stupid. But this is where we are. Like, someone thinks something. Other. We've become a nation of snitches. And I don't understand. I, can't. I was a mandated reporter for a while. And I had to make a couple reports. Like, it, it was my legal obligation to make some reports. And I didn't even like that. Now, the solace, of course, was that 
uh, the reports I was making, I genuinely believed were in the interests of safety of children. And I think that's pretty okay. But the reports I made were always directly about the safety of children in the moment. Like when I was down, I was down in Houston, Texas, and it's 98 degrees out. And there's a bunch of kids in a car that isn't running in a, in a parking lot. Like little kids sitting in a car. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. Like that's the thing where I'm going to call, I'm going to call that in and say, Hey, uh, there's a bunch of kids sitting in a parking lot. It's fucking Houston. And the car is off. Those kids are in danger. Now I, you know, if, the, if a car is running and a kid's in it, you know, and they're not like in a car seat or something, I, I, like a 12-year-old, I'm not going to call that in. But, man, little kids in a car, yeah, that's the, that's the type of thing that I'm going to do. So, but, but even that, I was like, do I call this? Like, I have to mull this over. I have to think about this. Some people, it's like so ingrained in them. I have to tell people what's wrong. Right now, and that's what Twitter is. Twitter is, it's got its own Stasi network. And these people love that network. They love to report people. It's their favorite thing. I had some guy actually comment on uh, my last live stream. Um, what was it? It was reported, traitor. <laughs> and I don't think they were joking. But they actually wrote like reported. Uh, it was amazing. It was amazing. Uh, a bad vibe says hashtag expose Twitter. This needs to happen. Jack is scared spitless. Uh, that's what this is from. Hashtag expose Twitter. Frankie Ramon says 2017 electoral vote. Dems objected to Alabama, uh, Florida, Georgia, Michigan, Miss, uh, wait, is that? Yeah. Michigan, Mississippi, North Carolina, South Carolina, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. It's not out of the ordinary calling for rep expulsion. Uh, calling for rep expulsion and unpersoning this time is disgusting. People weren't wrapped up in politics before, so now believe what CNN spews. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, the, and th that's why the Capitol riots are getting such different treatment from the media than anything that's been going on. They are in control of the prevailing narrative, and Congress is lapping at their taints. Like, they... They Congress is aligned with CNN right now. They're the news. The mainstream media is about to be the most insufferable it's been in a decade. Because they're in full alignment with Congress and with the president, the, the incoming president. It's ugh. all right. So here we go. Um, the team has a lot of work and a lot of focus on this particular issue. Uh, we also need to give them the space and the support to focus on the, the much bigger picture. Can, real quick, I'm sorry to keep pausing it. Can Jack not get in the frame? Can he not just get in the center of the frame? Is this Veritas's editing or is Jack unable to just operate a phone? Uh, because it is, it is not going away. Um, you know, the, the U.S. is extremely divided um, our platform is uh, showing that uh, every single day and our role is to protect the integrity of that conversation uh, and do what we can to make sure that no one is being harmed uh, based off that and they're not protecting the integrity of the conversation by bl by removing one side entirely they're removing one side of the conversation there's no integrity integrity there but listen this man has a savior complex this is the kind of guy who ends up eating children because he thinks it'll give him the power he needs to save the world. This is what bothers me about modern tech billionaires is they get a, a savior complex where only through the platform of Twitter can we, can, can we preserve the integrity of, of, of the global conversation manifesting in the people's minds? No, like we went along just fine without Twitter. But this guy literally, literally thinks that he's somehow going to be integral in 
facilitating a global conversation. Jack, you coded a thing to rate women or whatever. Get your own dick out of your mouth. This is ridiculous. That is the focus and um, that is the, the color we're going to provide. There you have it, Jack Dorsey, CEO of Twitter, recorded by one of his own employees, an insider whistleblower at Twitter, recorded saying this is going to be much bigger than just one account, revealing some censorship. You can see our motto at Veritas, our organization protected by an army of citizen patriots. We've had over a dozen people reach out to us this Hack. week with video, evidence inside Twitter. Stay tuned. They may be private companies, but they have more power than all three branches of government. Veritas Tips at ProtonMail.com. Just the tip. Why didn't he say just the tip? Anyway, so there it is. Project Veritas doing the journalism gig that doesn't happen anywhere anymore outside of independent people, outside of a weirdo like James O'Keefe. And I say that lovingly, like I, you know, I don't mean weirdo in a bad way, but some, he's just some guy, right? He's just some guy. He's like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to start exposing some people on some news stuff. And now he's extremely popular, extremely popular, has a huge platform to uh, go ahead and expose this stuff and allow people a voice, a voice that mainstream media doesn't want people to have because they want to control what the voice is. They don't want you to decide for yourself. If you decide for yourself, oh my God, what would happen if people made their own decision about what's credible and what's not? What would we do? What would we do if people thought for themselves? <laughs> we got to stop that immediately. And they've gone after James O'Keefe and Project Veritas over and over again. I mean, they go after them all the time, trying to get them deplatformed, trying to sue them, trying to get James O'Keefe in jail for his investigative reporting, stuff like that. They've been doing it. Uh, they really got mad when he went after abortion. Ooh. Ooh, remember that? Do you remember when he revealed to America that, uh, that they were selling baby parts from aborted babies? Do you remember this? And he gets the person there like, oh, yeah, we, we do this many, like, baby parts a day. And, and do you remember the media's response? Well, of course they sell baby parts. And the average person, like, your normal, like, grandma or mom or dad or whatever single person is just like, wait, what the fuck? They're selling baby parts. And the media's like, well, of, of course there's a baby part market. We're like, wait a minute. W why is that? Of course. Is it of course? Because you guys know, but have never told us. Wait, what exactly? Wait, what? Yeah. Planned Parenthood, giant network selling baby parts. James O'Keefe gets him to admit to it. And then they try to prosecute him for it. And how he got him to admit to it? He posed as someone who dealt in baby parts. And Spurious says more than stem cells. Yeah, more than stem cells. Le like legit organ trade. This is not like, you know, frozen embryos that they convert into stem cell therapy or something. Nope. It's crazy. That's where they, uh, yeah. They, he attacked the sacred cow. He attacked the sacred cow of abortion. That's why they never like, they, they really hate James O'Keefe. He went after that. Uh, it's insane. It's insane. That's illegal. No, the crazy thing is it's not. <laughs> it's not. What they were doing wasn't illegal. Although most people go, that's illegal. But it wasn't. And that's the, that's the problem with it, is that the news media is like, oh, well, of course they do this. Uh, government people are like, well, I mean, they do this, but it's kind of legal. 
and 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 normal people are like, but but that shouldn't be. That shouldn't be legal. Like we we got baby parts. This is wrong. This isn't. And let's not lose sight of the prize. They're incentivized to abort because they're going to sell the parts. So they make money on the abortion because it either gets paid by the, you know, the, the non-mother or it gets paid by a government program on her behalf or, you know, a boyfriend or whatever. Someone's paying for the abortion, but then they're going to sell the parts. And in doing so, it's, it's incentivizing them to market abortion. And Planned Parenthood absolutely markets abortion. That is the market. That was another part of the expose. Uh, he posed as a pimp with some, with some young, very young girl going in for an abortion. And they're just like, yeah, of course you can get one. Not even paying attention to the fact that there's an effing pimp sitting next to this girl, like pressuring her into an abortion. That was the LARP they were doing. But uh, anyway, that, that's just why they hate James O'Keefe, because he exposed that, and they, they for a moment have to remember that they're not the normal person. Normal people are like, this isn't okay at all. But the news is like, well, of course, of course we, of course we can get rid of those babies. Blaine 20 says, uh, at I stand with Vic community is now live on mine. So if you are an, I stand with Vic person, uh, and you want to, you want to hit that community, it's on mines as well. So there you go. Um, okay. That's enough about dead babies. Let's talk about Lisa Montgomery. The first woman executed by the federal government in 70 years, and the only woman on federal death row. So the U.S. government has now executed 100% of women on death row, while many men still live on death row, women obviously being treated worse than men in this case. Uh, Lisa Montgomery was sentenced to death in 2007. The only female inmate on federal death row has been executed for murder. So remember that the goal of this is to figure out if she should be executed because several people said she shouldn't. All right. So we're going to read her story as presented by BBC News. She received a lethal injection at a prison in Terre Haute, Indiana after last minute stay of execution was lifted by the U.S. Supreme Court. The case attracted attention because her lawyers argued she was mentally ill and suffered serious abuse as a child, which is, of course, a common story for people convicted of murder. The 52-year-old strangled a pregnant woman before cutting out and kidnapping her baby in Missouri in 2004. Her victim, 23-year-old Bobby Jo Stinnett, bled to death but her baby was safely recovered and returned to her family. I remember this story. I don't know if you remember this story, but that's, that's the story. The baby lived. The baby actually lived. Kind of, you like how they just kind of gloss over that? Well, before cutting out and kidnapping her baby, wait, <laughs> record scratch. <laughs> I'm sorry. Could you repeat that last bit, please? Did you say cutting out and kidnapping her baby? This woman performed a cesarean, apparently. And, and the baby lived. Montgomery is the first female federal inmate to be put to death by the United States government in 67 years. According to witnesses, a woman standing next to Montgomery during the execution process removed the inmate's face mask and asked her if she had any last words. <laughs> you're, you're strapped to the table. Arms apart like Jesus. You've got needles in your, in your veins. You're about to be killed. Well, they got you in the face mask just in case you go... <coughs> 
<laughs> and asked her if she had any last words. Montgomery responded, no, and said nothing else. She was pronounced dead at 131. Montgomery's lawyer, Kelly Henry, said that everyone who had participated in the execution should feel shame. Okay. Quote, the government stopped at nothing in its zeal to kill this damaged and delusional woman, she said in a statement. Lisa Montgomery's execution was far from justice. So, apparently, executing her was not just. I don't know what the alternative is. The latest execution was postponed twice, first by COVID-19. <laughs> Why did we stop killing people because of a virus that kills people? I don't get it. I don't understand. Like, somewhere I'm sure there's someone who can make sense of that, but it doesn't make sense to me. Like, whoa, you can't kill this guy. Someone might get sick. Huh? Uh then by a judge, until a Supreme Court ruling cleared the way for it to take place in the early hours of Wednesday. In a dramatic move late on Monday, a judge in Indiana had halted the scheduled injection until a mental competency hearing could be held. Her lawyers argued that she had been born brain damaged and was too mentally ill to be executed. As a child, she was routinely sexually and physically abused by her father and trafficked by her mother. Family members said her treatment was so violent that it amounted to torture, her lawyers say. Well, kill them too. Kill them too. I don't care. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I'm done with that. Uh, punish them. If they're so awful, please. Please punish them too. I'm with it. Uh, if they made her do it, kill them. I'm sure they're dead. But it's my problem with this. And I'm not a death penalty proponent at all. In fact, my position, if you don't know, my bias on the death penalty is this. I fully believe that the state has a right to execute people. The state, either the state they live in or the federal government as a state, as a sovereign. I believe that a sovereign nation has the right to carry out an execution. However, I have zero faith in our system to execute people properly, consistently. I saw largely I'm against the death penalty. However, it's on practicality grounds. I don't like the idea of innocent people being killed just because we want to kill other people. That being said, though, I mean, if you're going to execute people and you're executing people, I'm going to analyze it under whether or not this person should be executed based on the standard that exists. Not what I want it to be, right? Like, I, I would prefer the government didn't kill its citizenry. I've said this over and over and over again. However, if you're going to kill people, lots of people were physically and sexually abused as children, and that is awful. That is terrible, terrible things. Should not happen. And any parent, especially who sexually abuses a kid, put them on the wall and shoot them. I, I will not shed a tear. If you are sexually abusing your child, I will not care or protest on your behalf if you are being killed for your crime. Like, I'm, that's just how I am. I can't, I can't countenance it, okay? Everyone deserves their fair shot, but you won't find me, like, at the front of the line being like, wait a minute. So, my point, though, is a lot of people do this, and what they don't end up doing is they don't end up strangling and cutting open a pregnant woman and taking her child out while she bleeds to death. Like that, lots of sexual abuse happens. Very few murder-by-stealing unborn babies happen. Uh, let's see. Her defense team... Uh, and of course, this is the BBC, so we've got defense with a C, believes that at the time of her crime, Montgomery was psychotic and out of touch with reality. What was your first clue? Was it the fact that she strangled a woman and then cut an unborn baby out of her? 
to take as her own? Was that the first idea that she might have been uh, psychotic and out of touch with reality? Because that's a pretty damn good indication. But, like, my, my argument is that most people who are murdering, at least at the time of the murder, are psychotic and out of touch with reality. That's, that's what I would suggest. That's, I don't like this standard for that reason. Like, I don't think it obviates the crime. Again, generally speaking, if you came up to me and said, you know what, we're not going to have the states execute anybody ever again, I'm going to go good. I'm going to say good. Say, I support that. And I'm not a big fan. Not a big fan of executions. But it's not on a moral or principled point. Again, it's, it's the idea that I don't think the state is very good at this type of stuff in general. However, again, if your argument is that, well, they were crazy at the time they murdered someone and cut a baby out of them, I'm going to go, yeah, because that's what crazy people actually do. But not crazy people don't. So yes, they're crazy. But that doesn't mean that they didn't commit a horrific crime that killed someone and quite probably ruined a baby. <laughs> I, just, I don't see how that doesn't, uh, how her being psychotic and out of touch somehow changes the idea. Like if she did it, she's like cold and calculating and perfectly in control. I don't think that's any worse for the baby or mom than the psychotic person doing it. So I'm not. I'm not sure. Again, I, I've never bought this whole, well, they were psychotic and out of touch. Well, yeah. Because most of the people I know who aren't psychotic and out of touch don't kill people. That opinion is supported by 41 current and former lawyers. Oh, oh man, 41 of them? Jesus, that's like one small town worth of lawyers. As well as human rights groups like Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. Okay. All right. But her victim's family and friends say the murder committed by Montgomery was so horrific that she deserved to be put to death regardless of her mental health. Which is a very valid criticism of saying, well, she was crazy, though. It was like, yeah, but I mean, this is really, really awful and brutal. And I don't think her being crazy is a good excuse, they're saying. She killed 23-year-old Stinnett in Skidmore, Missouri after befriending the pregnant woman online over a shared love of dogs. After driving to Stinnett's house, Montgomery overpowered the pregnant woman, strangled her with a piece of rope, and cut the baby out of her womb. So how, how, how out of touch with reality was she? So she, uh... She befriends them online over a shared love of dogs. Police found Montgomery cradling a newborn girl she claimed to have given birth to the day before. After her story fell apart, she confessed to the killing. She was found guilty of a crime in 2007. Now, again, psychotic and out of touch with reality but in touch enough to lie to try and cover up her crime because, and this is a key factor in, uh, in the insanity defense or an insanity plea is that you do not know or understand the difference between right and wrong. You don't know the difference between right and wrong. It's not that you, make up a lie about what you did, like, oh, I gave birth to this baby. It's that you don't know that what you did was wrong. Now, had the cops shown up and they'd been like, this is my baby because I fairly cut it out of that awful bitch. Maybe you got an argument at that point that that person doesn't know the difference between right and wrong. This person lied about their story and that probably was a big factor in why she was found guilty. After her story fell apart, she confessed to the killing. She was found guilty of the crime in 2007. The next day, she was sentenced to death. Uh, legal challenges failed to commute the sentence. To fight to save the life of a death row inmate is always dramatic up until the very last moment, and none more so than the fight to save Lisa Montgomery. 
Although only President Trump had the power to grant her clemency and commute her sentence to life in prison, if her lawyers were able to delay her execution until after President-elect Biden takes office, they would have effectively achieved the same thing. Biden has pledged to end the death penalty on the federal level. So there you go. See, that's uh, uh, the biggest simp she had is Biden. But in all honesty, and again, you guys know my personal opinions and biases, and I will always be open and upfront with them, even if I think they may be unpopular. I agree with Biden on this. I think we should end the federal death penalty until we have a better system for sorting out who's guilty and innocent. And I think our system's pretty good, but I'm the kind of guy who doesn't want the state to kill its citizens. That's just, that's my opinion. And I didn't used to be that way. I used to be fully in favor of the death penalty, but I've changed my mind on that issue. And I, but I'm not going to say that anybody who believes different than me is like wrong or crazy or anything like that. That's just how I go. So I will agree with Biden on his pledge to end the death penalty at the federal level. We'll see if he does it. I highly doubt it. And so it all ended, as many death penalty cases do, in an 11th hour flurry of legal filings that pitted Montgomery's legal team against lawyers for the Department of Justice who are urging the execution forward. Ultimately, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled against Montgomery in all three of her final legal challenges, including one that argued that it would be unconstitutional to execute Montgomery because she is not mentally competent. By the way, Joe Biden can enact this. I just want to point this out because we're going to see how committed Joe Biden is to this. Joe Biden can enact this the day he is in office and Congress can't do anything about it. James K., yes, I do think they deserve the act. But what I think they deserve and what I think the government can faithfully execute are two different things. Like I said, I'm not morally opposed to the death penalty. I just don't have faith in the state to do it right because I think government is fucking bad at everything. Um, so anyway, Biden can end every death penalty of every federal death row inmate the day he enters office with the stroke of a pen, it would take almost nothing. He could commute their sentence of death to life in prison for every single one of them without any intervention from anybody. Nobody can stop Joe Biden on this. Not a single person can stand in the way of this pledge of Joe Biden. Nobody can at all. Not one. So we'll find out if he's a liar. He is. He is. Uh, Brian Moe. You can say they need to speed them up, but life in prison is cheaper than the death penalty. For every single case. It's just how it is. Uh, and so it all ended as many, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ultimately they ruled against her in all three of her final legal challenges, including one that argued that it would be unconstitutional to execute Montgomery because she's not mentally competent. Now, again, it's easy to say she's not mentally com competent or she was insane, but that was an argument forwarded by her attorneys. And they've had since 2004 to make that argument, including at the criminal trial, and they failed to make it effectively every single time. Since 2008, Montgomery had been held in a federal prison in Texas for female inmates with special needs where she's been receiving psychiatric care. She received her execution date. She, since receiving her execution date, she'd been placed on suicide watch in an isolated cell. Why though? Again, oh, just give her the rope. Why do we do this? This is such a weird thing. Like, I, 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 I don't get it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We can't have this person killing themselves. <laughs> okay, before anybody jumps on me for this, I do know why. I do know why. Okay? I'll tell you exactly why they do this. And there is a logical reason for it. At just sort of the common sense level, it seems really ridiculous. 
There's a real logical reason, okay? If the state could improperly put people on death row with the idea of pressing them into suicide, though that would later be an overturned decision, that would be an improper way for the state to kill people without killing people and without their proper due process, okay? That's why, that's the real reason why, but on its face, it just is silly, all right? Montgomery's lawyer, Miss Henry, said her original legal defense was woefully inadequate and presented few of the details about her abuse, trauma, and mental illness. The Supreme Court outlawed the death penalty at state and federal level in 1972, but reversed the decision four, le four years later. Since 19... Because you need, you need a constitutional amendment to remove the death penalty. Or just a law passed by Congress to remove the death penalty. That's it. That's it. But the Supreme Court in 1972 tried to pretend that the death penalty was cruel and unusual punishment, which is ridiculous since the death penalty was the only penalty for felonies when the country was founded and when the amendment was written. So, uh, the Eighth Amendment, that is. When the Eighth Amendment was written, the death penalty was the only felony punishment that existed. There was not life in prison or any of that stuff. You just got killed. So, the, that was in and certainly contemplated in cruel and unusual punishment in the Eighth Amendment. So that's what they tried to do in 72. They reversed the decision four years later because it was a bad decision. If you want to make the death penalty illegal, simple ways to do it. Congress passes a law that says we will no longer use the death penalty. Done. It's illegal forever. It will likely never get undone. Or, or the other one is... Uh, you make a constitutional amendment that says the death penalty is cruel and unusual punishment in violation of the Eighth Amendment and is not allowed. And then you really cement it down. That's it. Since 1976, 16 women other than Lisa Montgomery have been executed, but all by individual states rather than by the government. Before Montgomery's execution, the last woman to be executed by the U.S. government was Bonnie Headley, Hetty who died in a gas chamber in Missouri, 1953, according to the Death Penalty Information Center. Man, I don't want to be gassed. Federal executions have been on pause for 17 years before President Donald Trump ordered them to resume earlier this year. So again, uh, oh, you may also be interested in the YouTube video of the women who write to death row inmates. Probably not. Probably not. So that's, uh, that's, that's that one. Here, here she is. Uh, F's or S's in chat for Lisa Montgomery. Did she deserve it? Uh, would a man be executed for the same crime? These are the questions I pose to you. Bad Vibe says, how about those Seahawks, specifically their security manager? He apparently loves cheese pizza. Oh, oh, yes, he does. Yes, he does. Bad Vibe says, 41 lawyers. Are they sure they are? Are they sure they are, are lawyers and Don don't live on Twitter? <laughs> no, nope. So there you go. That's uh. That's the story of Lisa Montgomery. Okay, since we're kind of uh, around the, the time of having still peak viewership, let me go ahead and remake the announcement. The announcement is that video playbacks, and I'm going to make this announcement several times over the next several shows, video playbacks of the live streams are not going to be available on the main channel. The live streams will still happen on this channel. But the video playbacks will be uploaded to a separate channel, which is uh, Rakeda Archive currently. Um, and that'll, that'll be live streams from, you know, anywhere. If I do a live stream on the media channel, it'll be uh, brought over there. If, you know, I do a painting or gaming stream, those will all be on the Rakeda Archive channel. So that will be, um, that's the announcement I want to make. 
It's what Nerd Roddick does. Lots of other creators do it. Lots of other creators do it. And uh, it's just live streams, the playbacks sitting around actively harm this channel's growth. And I can see it. I can see it in the video distribution and it pisses me off. I wish it wasn't that way. No paywall. Don't bother none. No paywall. They'll, they'll be available for free. Fully available. Unedited. Uncut. They'll all be over there. No paywall. Uh, they're just going to be off of this channel. Um, I'm not going to bit shoot it. Uh, I've heard about uploading very long content to bit shoot. There are going to be backups, um, but I don't think bit shoot's the one. Uh, Monkey one, I will link the channel when it's ready, more ready to go. Cooking streams will stay where they are uh, unlisted with access for members. Link the channel. Oh my. Just a moment. Here's the link. Here's the link to the channel. Okay, close. I'll see if I can get a custom URL. I think I might have to have, um, I think to get a custom URL, I have to like do some stuff on there. But uh, somehow there's a way to do it. Where the hell is it? Advanced settings. No, this channel's not made, not made for kids. I never upload content that's made for kids. Uh, da, 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 da. Anyway, like I said, I'll, I'll get, I've got some work to do on the channel, uh, and I will before uploading. I also have to figure out how to handle the backlog of uploads. That'll be, will the streams be removed from this channel or hidden? They will be, uh, privated or removed or whatever. Whichever one completely, um, removes them from the channel's like distribution. So, but yeah, like I said, this is, this is coming. It's not going to happen tomorrow. Uh, I'm giving people plenty of warning and, and lead, lead time on it. Spurious, listen to the baked Alaska court case. The one you sent me is 38 minutes. Uh, so I'm not going to do it on the show. The chat will remain on the, you know, on the playback, but unfortunately, like the chat itself, uh, the, that YouTube preserves won't be there. So the playback will have the chat. That's why I have it. That's not going away. Hmm. But that's, um, that's how that'll be. All right. And yes, if you get to a thousand likes today, of course I will, I will take a shot in celebration. And that'll be a significant amount of Jefferson's ocean at that point. And, uh, and then we'll see how this last story goes, I guess. But that's up to you guys. You guys have to hit the like button, uh, you know, another 150 of you or so.
Gary deletes him from his main channel then uploads it to his live channel. It helps him a lot. Yeah. Whatever, I'll I'll figure out exactly what needs to be done. I, I don't know, but they won't be available on this channel. However that works, they won't be available. And I have a local copy of every live stream. I record all of them locally uh, and <laughs> have to pay a lot for all the storage of that, but I have them all. So. So, yeah, we are uh, we're very close to a thousand likes. This is the next story here. Breaking CNN's Jade Sacker penetrated penetrating the Capitol with a member of BLM slash Antifa cheering. We did it. And then asking her conspirator if he was filming, he said he'd delete it. He lied. CNN was in on it. Dun, dun, dun. Will the thigh high stream be on the archive? Oh, I shouldn't say that I, uh, I guess I shouldn't say I archive all live streams. My Twitch streams are not actually locally recorded. Uh, the Twitch ones are not. Um, that archive is on Kiwi Farms. And uh, I fully, like, I, I don't, I'm not DMCAing that or anything if anybody re-uploads it. Like, I don't know if Corono uploaded it to his YouTube channel or whatever, because he, he tends to do that. Um, if anybody wants permission to, like, archive my thought stream on Twitch, it is still there on Twitch right now. Uh, if anyone wants permission, I will grant it flat out. Like, I don't, but I, I don't actually archive the Twitch live stream. Oh, there's a thousand likes. Okay. Quick, like five people unlike this before it, things get really stupid. Okay, here we go. This is always a terrible choice. Here we go. That's a little bit low. We'll add a little bit to it real quick. There. All right, so we've got this. What do I think of a secession? I think it's extremely unlikely. <coughs> okay, too big of a shot. Not the most pleasant. Woo. So the problem with uh, secession is that whatever ground level support Trump still has, although I'm reading reports that internal polling suggests that Trump is losing support amongst voters, I'm not actually sure I believe that uh, but that's the report, okay? Whatever that number actually is, Trump is definitely losing support amongst elected persons. Uh, Teleco Friedman, I don't have any coffee whiskey. But anyway, it's... It's not about the actual voter polls. Like, I, I, I'm not putting credibility into that claim. I think it suits the media to have that claim, so I don't care uh, what they're saying. I'm just pointing out that that's what they said. Whatever that is, it is obvious that Trump is losing support from elected Republicans. Elected Republicans, uh, you know, are, are in, in higher numbers than should be going against Donald Trump. And so they're not going to be seceding from the union. 
Hell, uh, Georgia, I don't know if you guys saw this, but Georgia uh, is kind of punishing by stripping from committees Republicans who opposed the certification of votes in Georgia. The Georgia Republican Congress, the state Republican Congress, is removing state Republicans from committee positions because they opposed the election result. Uh, they're, they're going after uh, Republicans in the U.S. House and U.S. Senate. Um, these people are being punished dramatically. Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley are being excoriated right now. M M Rich McConnell, Mitch McConnell is a, a, a brave Kentuckian. He, he's not sure whether or not he's going to impeach the president of the United States, but he's pretty sure he committed impeachable offenses. Uh, these people are opportunistic. They're out of touch with reality and with the voter base. Um, they, but they are what they are. They're political animals, and they're going to beg for a crumb of pussy from the people like AOC for the rest of their term. That's what they're going to do. And so uh, Mitch has said he he's, wants to be clear. He hasn't decided on whether or not he's going to vote to impeach Donald Trump. But Mitch has already made it clear because he's a piece of shit that he thinks Donald Trump should be impeached. He's just determining what the political outcome that he's going to go for is. That's worse, in my opinion. Think about what Mitch McConnell's doing. Okay, hold on. Whoops. Nope, this one. That's what happens when you have shots of uh, Jefferson Ocean, is you press the wrong button on the Streamlabs. Mitch McConnell has stated openly that Donald Trump ha has commit impeachable offenses, but he simply hasn't determined whether or not he will vote to impeach Donald Trump based on the political results of the vote. That's not what impeachment is for. To have integrity if he were being honest in the first place, Mitch McConnell would need to necessarily vote for impeachment if he believes that Donald Trump commit an impeachable offense. That's how you do it. That's what it is. Like, if I'm sitting on a jury and I go, well, did the guy commit the crime or not? If he commit the crime, then I'm going to vote that he's guilty. I'm not going to go, what will the public think? think of me if I vote this person guilty. That's not how the jury system works. That's not how impeachment works. Impeachment, while it is a political process, it is based on if the crime, because it is a crime they're accused of, a crime against the people, is impeachable. Now, not a criminal statute, not a crime codified in a statute. That, that's the distinction we need to make. Impeachment is not about whether they broke a specific statute, it's whether or not their actions amount to a criminal act against the people. That's why it's a political process. Because a president can do a bunch of legal things and it can be a crime against humanity. For example, let's say Joe Biden got into office and pardoned every federal inmate, all of them, and said, Go free! And he removed everyone from the sex offender registry, for example. That would be a crime against America. It would be a legitimate and legal use of the pardon power. Okay? Make no mistake. Be legitimate, legal use of the pardon power. The president has the power to completely pardon and excuse from all punishment and registration every federal criminal. If he did that, he would legally be allowed to do so, but it would be a crime against America because it would put children and people in danger from people who need to be in jail. That's how it goes. 
So that would be impeachable, even though he didn't break the law. So impeachment is about a crime against the people. So did Trump commit a crime against the people? No, of course not. His words at the White House leading up to the Capitol Hill riots were in no way a criminal act. And never once did he even come close to suggesting that people should breach the doors of the Capitol and go inside and harm members of Congress. Which, by the way, the claims of hunting down to harm members of Congress are dubious at best. Dubious at best. But that being said, Trump didn't advocate for that. He didn't incite anyone to do that. He didn't intend anyone to do that. He didn't state it anywhere. We have no evidence that he wanted people to break through the barricades and storm the White House. In fact, all of his speech is about uh, having people from outside hearing their voices from outside. And whoa, Jason McConnell with a big chat. Thank you. First of all, huge thank you. Jason says, live just north of Minnesota. In Canada, I presume. I went to University of Wisconsin-Madison. I've saved enough to qualify for an investment retirement visa in the U.S. I always planned to move to Grand Marais, Minnesota. I'm 46 and can retire now. I no longer have any interest in going to Minnesota. How are you feeling about Minnesota? Ho, <laughs> ho, Funny you should ask, Jason. On a personal level, I would love nothing more than to immediately move away from Minnesota. Nothing more. I would move to either Texas or Florida, maybe Hawaii, even though their politics are absolutely cucked. The atmosphere is beautiful. Uh, maybe Colorado. Their politics are a little iffy. I don't like Minnesota, though. Several other places I would much rather be. But, but, for me, I've got too much family here in Minnesota that is not able to relocate. So, I'm here. I don't really like it, but I'm here. So that's what I think about Minnesota. I hate this state. I hate the state income tax. Oh man, after last year, I really, really hate. You know, our state income tax is comparable to California's. It's brutal. It's brutal, fam. I hate it. I really, really hate it. Um, I don't like snow. I don't like cold. don't like dealing with snow. I love my house, and I love my property. But that's, that's the extent of it. And I love my family that's here. I mean, that's, that's what keeps us here entirely. It's, it's family. If I, could, uh, if I could take this house, sell it, and move without the attachments of family tomorrow, I would do it. But we're here and probably going to be here for a long time. So that's it. Don't report you on your earnings earnestly then. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I have to. If I lied about my taxes, I would also be disbarred. But thank you, Jason McConnell, for the massive contribution. I really appreciate it. Blaine20 says, we need a modern day McCarthy. We have it. It's AOC. What are you talking about? That's a video I've been meaning to do for the past two days, but I've been too busy to do it. It's the new Red Scare is Republicans. And are you now or have you ever been a member of the Trump party? That's literally happening right now. I'm going to try and get that video up tomorrow. 
Bad Vibe says Nick's nose holds dual citizenship. Canadian American nose. <laughs> Look, it's only Canadian so long as I'm pointed north. If I turn west, it's Chinese American nose. Uh, okay, here we go. Let's do this. Let us do this video. 30 seconds of video. This is from at Amuse. Um, I don't know who this is. Deplatformed the conservative survival guide, how to survive the coming storm coming soon to Amazon. I've only recently encountered this account from people retweeting it. So I don't know anything about them, but they've had some interesting scoops. So this is from Max Blumenthal. I don't know who that is either. Here we go. We did it. <laughs> you were right. We did it. Dude, I was trying to tell you. I, I couldn't say much. You were right. <laughs> you just have to wash my chat. Oh my God. Is this not going to be the best film you've ever made in your life? No. That's it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah? Hell yeah. Wait, you weren't recording, were you? I'll delete that shit. But I didn't record you or me. It was just voices. Oops. We did it. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. You you you're not recording, right? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I'll delete it. Who the fuck is Jade Sacker? Uh, let's see. JadeSacker.com photojournalist. Come on, load her website. Website's having a little bit of trouble. Jade Sacker. Here's some of her photojournalism on Instagram. I'm trying to find something about her. fuck is this foreignpolicy.org jade sager is a photojournalist based in new york city oh here we go hold on just a second Here we go. All right, this is perfect. She shows up in a PolitiFact fact check, baby. Are you guys ready? The apologetics are already coming. So here's the PolitiFact. The Facebook post says left-wing activist John Sullivan incited the insurgents of the U.S. Capitol. Mostly false. Facebook post wrongly claims left-wing activist Antifa incited U.S. Capitol mob. Uh, if your time is short, John Sullivan, an activist from Utah, Utah, joined supporters of President Donald Trump who stormed the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. He said he was trying to document what happened. There's no evidence that Sull Sullivan incited the insurgents alone amid a crowd of thousands. Video he uploaded online shows his perspective as he filmed. Sullivan denied any affiliation of the broad Antifa coalition, although he has posted related hashtags on his Twitter accounts. There remains no legitimate evidence that the mob at Capitol was infiltrated or led by Antifa activists in disguise. John Sullivan has been charged for his participation in this crime. Social media users and allies of President Donald Trump have continued pushing the baseless claim that it was Antifa activists, not Trump supporters, who mobbed the U.S. Capitol. No, no, no. That's not the claim. That's not the claim. The claim is that Antifa evident or Antifa activists led the breach. Not did it. Not not that they were the persons who did it, but that 
there was an otherwise peaceful crowd and some instigators from Antifa or Black Lives Matter basically led the way, opened the floodgates. If you know anything about group behavior, you'll realize that it doesn't, how do I word this? A few loud voices lead the actions of the group. Okay? So it's not like the group is a monolith, because group isn't a monolith. But the overwhelming majority of people are not actual leaders. That's just not how groups operate. In any group of a significant size, and significant, I mean like 10 or more, you're basically going to have one. A uh, person who's a leader in a group of 10. And that person's actions will determine the outcome of the group. You find this in jury studies over and over and over again. If you have three different juries for the same exact set of facts in the same exact case who are hearing it, and uh, one of my professors actually did this, for, that was their company, was to do mock trials. So you do the same trial in front of three separate juries. They were all watching the same thing, but when they went to deliberate on their decisions, they went to their own jury room. So you have 36 total people, three juries of 12, and then you would monitor the outcome and it would allow companies to predict whether or not they wanted to take an issue to trial. Okay. So here's the thing that they found is that in every jury room, what mattered most was what one or two people in the jury room said. And that everybody else in every jury just went along with it. You would have basically alpha personalities. Those alpha personalities would lead. And it's a matter of, in a, in a group of 12, 8 to, 8 to 16%. That's it. Or is it 9 to 18%? Is 1 sixth 18%? I don't remember. It's like 9 to 18%, okay? And that's just how it works out. Consistently, every time, one to two people lead the group. In a crowd of a couple hundred thousand, you don't need very many people to lead a smaller subset of those people into the capital. You get a couple hundred people into the capital with 10 people leading it. That's it. That's all it takes. Okay, there's no evidence that the crowd was infiltrated or led by Antifa activists in disguise. Well, except for Sullivan, though. Like, except for that guy. And specific individuals held up online as Antifa activists have turned out to be Trump supporters. One man accused of being an Antifa thug, for example, is actually a supporter of the QAnon conspiracy theory. Another man labeled as an Antifa activist is really no a known neo-Nazi. Uh, so they've cherry picked two examples. Okay, good. But claims faulting Antifa for the violence of the Capitol keep coming. The latest target is Utah's John Sullivan, the founder of Insurgents USA, an activist group against police brutality. Just a second ago, they said that this guy wasn't affiliated with Antifa. But Antifa isn't a thing. It's an idea, right? I wonder. Let's just. Fucking, oh my god, I can't believe I have to do this shit. Insurgents USA. Literally Insurgents USA. Let's see what Insurgents USA is about us. Come here. Come here. Wait, no. We're going to do this. This is Insurgents USA's website, okay? I don't know if they're affiliated with Antifa, though. I'm having my doubts. This is Insurgents USA, guys. Right here. Burning an American flag in the full attire. There's no evidence that John Sullivan, who's, uh, you know, affiliated with Insurgents USA, has anything to do with Antifa. All right. Insurgents USA was started in 2020 in response to the George Floyd tragedy. The lack of care for the human life was unacceptable, so we set out to end police brutality. We then set out to empower and uplifting black and indigenous voices. We want to build local powers to enable the community to intervene in violence enacted by the state and government vigilantes. 
Our mission is the unification of our nation because the people united will never be divided. Woo! Become a revolutionary. We are the revolution. Insurgents USA is forming a rainbow coalition to unite all people under one banner to fight for liberation and freedom for all people. Uh, how we hope to achieve this is by taking a stance against acts of inhumane violence, discrimination of any form, and political corruption. We are the revolution. Let's show them the power of the people united. A racist white militia. <laughs> Here's their discord. Here's their discord. They've got members online. You can check it out right now. Look at all these people. They've got Ann Jula. <laughs> Bob from accounting. Curious George Orwell, L-A-C-A. Dank Memer. M Mrs. Potato. Nazi killer. Nuke chicken. Anyway, you can, you can just go ahead and see this. <laughs> Here's Insurgents USA. Oh, they have a Twitter account. Let's see. Have questions at Ask the Block. They're in Portland, Oregon. Please show your support and uplift our voices. We want to help out the community, and so any support that you can show below is much appreciated. If you'd like to invite others to join the community, please share this link in our Discord. Here they are. Here they are. You guys will have to decide. Oh, we found an underground community of Chud Chats and made a list on our Discord channel. Let's wreak some havoc. Spread this around. Link to chat in my bio. Jacob Wall, the official channel of Jacob Wall. Proud Boys, Long Island, the official Proud Boys of Long Island. Oh, my fucking Christ. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So this is, uh, this is Insurgents USA. They're definitely not communists, though. They're definitely not communists. Hmm. Where did my, uh, where did my live stream go? There we go. Automata says, hey, you remember when there were a lot of news outlets that covered the Umbrella Man who broke windows and suggested he was an instigator and you should therefore ignore culpability of the group? You're not supposed to. No, I have no idea what that's about. Thank you. Bad Vibe says, wait, you mean the same folks that mostly peacefully protested this summer with Congressional Dems blessing? Yes. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. So anyway, we're going with uh, this. Whiskey barrel staves. Oh, damn. So I can just order a bunch of these staves and make the wall myself. That's what you're telling me? Hmm. Hmm. I'll have to look into that. Uh, let's get back to this PolitiFact thing. Where did that go? Here we go. Anti-Trump founder of radical left-wing group Insurgents USA, John Sullivan, incited Insurgents of U.S. Capitol, said the text over one image shared widely on Facebook. Post originally originated on Parlor, a social media platform targeted to conservatives and the devil. The post was flagged as part of Facebook's efforts to combat false news and misinformation on its news feed. Other posts sought to link him to Antifa. I don't know why they would. Sullivan has not been shy about his presence at the Capitol riot. He filmed the events as they happened, and he was nearby when Capitol Police fatally shot a woman inside the building. He described the shooting during an interview with CNN's Anderson Cooper that night. Sullivan confirmed to PolitiFact that he entered the building with the rioters and that he is, he is in the photograph shown as part of the Facebook post. But there's no proof that he incited the insurgents. And he has denied any affiliation with Antifa, a broad coalition of anti-fascist activists. 
In September 8th press briefing, FBI Assistant Director Stephen Dantuono said the agency has no indication that Antifa played a role. It did play a role through this guy. Like, we, we gotta stop. We've got to stop pretending. We've got to stop pretending. Well, look, I'm not with Antifa. They don't do the same thing for anybody else. Like, this guy is literally not Antifa as much as he's not with Donald Trump supporters, right? Like, he's literally with Donald Trump supporters at the Capitol Hill riot. But he can credibly say, well, I'm not with Donald Trump supporters. I'm with this group. But you are, though. Like, you're literally with them. But anyway, um, this is actually incorrect. Because here's the thing about incitement. Incitement does not mean that a person is the sole cause of an incident. Let me restate that. An incite incitement. Holy shit, in a September 8th press briefing? They meant January 8th. That's a typo. Here's the press briefing. January 8th, 2021. Weird. I didn't even catch that. Incitement. The criminal liability for incitement is as follows. Is there a call to an encouragement of a promotion of a criminal act that is reasonably likely to imminently occur? All right. So you have to advocate, propose, encourage a criminal act of someone else. Can't incite yourself to, to a criminal act. Someone else. And then it has to be imminently capable of occurring. Doesn't have to occur. And just because it occurs doesn't mean it was imminently capable of occurring. But those two things have to be present. So. Did he incite the insurgents? I mean, there's video of him encouraging it. That's the definition of incitement. Imminently able to happen. There's a big crowd of people who are listening to him. He's encouraging an unlawful act. That's the definition of incitement. So, yes. Why was Sullivan there? In interviews with PolitiFact and other national and local news outlets, Sullivan said he went to the ride to document what happened, not to participate. But he did participate. On his two Twitter accounts, Sullivan shared his videos he captured as the crowd stormed into the Capitol, including a nearly 40-minute YouTube video that graphically documents Ashley Babbitt's fatal shooting by police. This motherfucker better be demonetized, because if I played that video, I would be. Quote, I was not leading that in any shape, form, or fashion. Not actually the definition of incitement, by the way. Leadership has nothing to do with incitement. Sullivan said of the mob that brushed, bashed through windows and doors and stormed the Capitol, I didn't organize it. I had no part in planning it. I was only there to experience and witness what went down. That's not incitement. Incitement has nothing to do with organizing or planning. In fact, incitement is typically the opposite of organization and, and planning. Kidda says, some choice quotes from Sullivan's incitement. We got to get this shit burned. Hey, guys, I have a knife. I have a knife. Let me up. Why don't we go in there? That's the, that's the fucking definition of incitement, by the way. Why don't we go in there? That's what I'm saying. Break that shit. It would be fire if somebody had revolutionary music and shit. That's, that's definitively incitement. That's an academic review of what incitement is. Jade Sacker, a documentary filmmaker working on a project about Sullivan and his brother, was there alongside Sullivan for much of the riot. As she filmed Sullivan and the mob around him, he was in her sight 40 to 50% of the time, Sacker told PolitiFact. Quote, I wouldn't say that he was directing the charge or anything. Doesn't have to be. He was certainly actively there and interested in what was going on, Sacker said. He was recording the whole time. PolitiFact reviewed Sullivan's video of the mob in the Capitol and Babbitt's shooting. It doesn't show Sullivan clearly engaged in the violence or leading the run-up to the Capitol. 
Neither of those are definitions of incitement. PolitiFact, you hire a fucking lawyer. Hire any lawyer. You can hire a dead lawyer. And he would tell you that that has nothing to do with incitement. Incitement is not leadership. It has nothing to do with leading. And it has less to do with engaging. Insiders often aren't engaging in the violence. That's the whole point. If they were engaging in the violence, you would convict them of that. Incitement is going ahead and convicting them because they didn't participate, but they induced someone else to do so. Why are you stupid? Fifth newest upload on Jaden X YouTube channel. We're doing it. Fuck it. We're doing it live. Choose one, two, three, four, five. All right. Here we go. You guys ready for this? We'll bring it over. Guys, do you want to know why? Do you want to know why incitement exists as a crime? Because they wanted criminal liability for the person who didn't participate in the crime. They wanted criminal liability for the person who didn't participate in the crime. Because if you could just stand there and order other people or suggest other people to do a criminal act and never engage in it yourself, you'd have a liability shield. Oh, I didn't do that. I was just talking. That was the literal purpose of incitement. The, well, he wasn't actively participating. No, insiders usually don't. There, there's no allegation. There is not a single allegation from any of these disingenuous pieces of garbage that Donald Trump participated in the Capitol riots, yet all of them say he incited it. All of them. All right, here we go. Here we go. We want you to go home. Gamer words, no! What was that? We want you to go home. I'm recording. And there's so many people. It's just, they're going to push their way up here. Uh, uh, bro, I see people out there get hurt. I don't want to see you get hurt. I just bro, I'm recording. We're going to push through here. I don't want to see you get hurt. I've seen people get hurt. I don't want to see you get hurt. We will make a, we will make a path dead ass. Like, we don't want... That's what I'm saying. We'll make a path, bro. Please, let's make a path. We We'll make a path. We make a path. The whole country hates I want you to go home. We have go, go. Let's go. Get this. They moved out of the way. Uh oh. These guys just left. Do you know what this guy did? Like, I don't know if you understand. What he did likely was a threat of violence we just witnessed a felony now i'm not blaming these guys for leaving really not blaming them for leaving but what he did was to basically say look if you don't leave you're gonna get hurt we'll make a path for you to leave he's actually inducing them to do a criminal act but okay <laughs> So there you go.
The gun, in my opinion, is, uh, shooting Ashley Babbitt is completely unnecessary. Um, she was clearly engaged in a criminal act, but shooting her is not the solution. And, uh, as a person who is outspoken, I am outspoken against police violence generally and much again much to the chagrin of the chat sometimes um i i default to the position of i don't want the state shooting people even when it's justified i don't want the state to kill people i'm not saying it's not justified in ashley babbitt's case i don't see anywhere where it's justified that's an interesting that's, uh, that's an interesting sort of prospect. Shooting her was not in uh, pretty much any other situation. That would be an unjust shooting. She has no weapon. The use of force? I don't think so. I don't think so. All right, here we go. Uh, at points in the video, Sullivan can be heard telling others he was only filming and discouraging violence. <laughs> Listen, I've seen, I don't want to see you get hurt. That's not discouraging violence. That's, that's a fun mafia threat. At other points, he appeared to encourage what was happening. As rioters scaled a wall outside, for example, he cheered them all. We did this shit together, he said after the barricades came down. This is fucking history. We are all a part of fucking history. Let's burn this shit down. That's, this uh, literally incitement. Literally incitement. This is a criminal act. Sullivan can be heard saying on the video before heading inside, it was not clear if the comment was directed to or heard by any specific person or people. This also isn't the test for incitement, PolitiFact. This isn't the test for incitement at all. The test for incitement is whether or not a speaker invites people or encourages people to commit a crime and whether a reasonable person under that circumstance would understand that a crime was Im that the crime they're encouraging was imminently likely to occur. Yes. Yes. Of course, this is incitement. When you're talking about the United States Capitol building and a mob of people storming it, this is absolutely incitement. <laughs> Told Desert News he was trying to blend in. That, that's not an excuse. Because a lot of people were there who didn't say what he said, and they blended in just fine. In other videos online, he can be seen filming. He was vocal, but I wouldn't say he was inciting violence, Sacker said. Sorry, you don't get a say in this. You're affiliated with him. Sullivan spoke with police and FBI agents January 7th about the shooting he witnessed. He said, you could say if I were going to be arrested, they would have done so. He said, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you guys follow what just happened? Look, if I was going to be arrested, they would have done so. Womp, 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 womp. <laughs> Liberal Utah activists charged with joining Capitol Riot. The charges against the founder of a protest group called Insurgents USA include a felony count of interfering. John Sullivan, founder of a protest group called Insurgents USA, was charged in a criminal complaint with one felony count of interfering with law enforcement in connection with a civil disorder, as well as a misdemeanor charges of unlawful entry and disorderly conduct. Uh, they should hit him with incitement, too. What a piece of shit this guy is. Fuck him. Hope he goes to prison forever. <laughs> They're gonna arrest me that would've done so. <laughs> what? What? What's the date? What's the date? Five days later. <laughs> no, seven. One week later. <laughs> Investigations by law enforcement agencies are ongoing, with several arrests made among the thousands of Trump supporters who took part in the chaotic scene. There's no evidence that Sullivan incited the insurgents on his own, as the Facebook post suggests. On his own? Why do they quote, incited the insurgents on his own is out of the quotes. 
Sullivan denies Antifa affiliation. Social media users have linked Sullivan to Antifa and Bla Black Lives Matter because of his past protest history, social media activity. His Twitter accounts have frequently used hashtag Antifa, hashtag BLM, and other anti-Trump or anti-police hashtags, PolitiFact found. The cover photo of one of these accounts advertised at January 6th Insurgents USA event to kick these fascists out of D.C. So, <laughs> look, I'm, I'm not Antifa, though. What are you talking about, bruh? Sullivan has also been filmed using incendiary language in the past at a small August rally in Washington, D.C. He described the need to rip Trump out of office According to Fox News, photos highlighted on his personal website show him holding a firearm. <gasps> a firearm. But Sullivan said he's not part of the Antifa coalition, often blamed for violent events, noting that Trump supporters and the riots were shouting F Antifa. But he wasn't with the Trump supporters. He was just observing them, right? Sacker said she has followed Sullivan for four months and accompanied him to many protests, including some affiliated with Black Lives Matter. <laughs> He's not pro-Trump, she said, but he cares about dismantling the system. She said she had not personally seen him be violent. Sullivan faces criminal charges related to a June 29 protest in Provo, Utah, according to public records. Uh, Deseret News reported he helped organize the event and was seen on recordings kicking and threatening drivers while directing protesters to block intersections. <laughs> Guys, the, the violence in this country can be attributed to such a small percentage of people. PolitiFact found no other criminal history. Those claiming Antifa infiltrated or led the mob at the Capitol have provided no proof. I mean, other than this guy, the evidence of Trump supporters participating, however, is indisputable. Participating. Notice what they don't say here. Notice what they don't say here. Claiming Antifa infiltrated or led the mob at the Capitol have provided no proof, but they say participating. Who led it? Who led the mob? The march to the Capitol was weeks in the making. Oh my God, I thought Trump incited it. With plans indicating the potential for violence drawn up in the open on social media forums and pro-Trump websites, video and photographs from the scene show Trump-branded paraphernalia and flags are ruling. Sullivan joined the mob of Trump supporters that entered the Capitol, filming the events as they transpired and posting his videos online. He was one person among thousands. There's no evidence that he incited the violence himself or led the, capital char or led the charge into the Capitol. Sullivan denied any affiliation with Antifa, although he has posted related hashtags on Twitter. We rate this statement mostly false. Update. This fact check was updated to include more detail from Sullivan's video at the Capitol. Our ruling remains the same. So the statement is, left-wing activist John Sullivan incited insurgents of, the, of U.S. Capitol. This is actually true. This is actually. This isn't even mostly true. This is actually true. The statement. Left wing activist John Sullivan incited insurgents of U.S. Capitol is a true statement. True. One hundred percent. Sue me for defamation, you piece of garbage. His statements amount to the criminal, the, the legal definition for incitement. Much more than Donald Trump or Rudy Giuliani's do. Much more. Jason McConnell says, as a good Canadian who can see Minnesota and Michigan out their window, I hereby do declare that eight years ago I took any guns I owned or inherited on a tragic boat ride I barely survived. Sadly, all was lost, especially pre-1937 stuff. Hey, me too, buddy. All of my guns are at the bottom of some lake, and I don't even remember which one it was. Absolute trash. These monsters. The media is aligned against Trump right now. That's the bottom line. I don't even care if you like Trump or don't like Trump. It doesn't matter. Brian Moe says, shut up, you're clearly drunk. 
uh, while I may be drunk, his words amount to the legal definition of incitement. Again, much more than Trump's or Rudy Giuliani's. You don't have to like Trump. I don't care if you support Trump. That's the fact. Being in a crowd yelling, let's burn this shit down, is incitement. That's the legal definition. I don't know what else to tell you. And if you don't think so, you're fucking wrong. Like, here, that's my argument. You're fucking wrong. And I'll say it over and over again. That's just how it goes. There's no way about it. That's what the legal definition is. So anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's get this stream wrapped up. Let's get this streamed wrapped up. Aligned against Trump right now, are you high? I'm not high. I mean, they are. If you're saying they've been aligned against Trump for a while, yeah. Yes, but they're fully in, they're in ascendancy right now. And if you stop trying to be pedantic. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let's read the rest of the chats. And then we'll go over to Twitch for some Ranger Spencer playing. Start a new channel and name it. You're fucking wrong. No kidding. No kidding. All right, we're going to read the uh, rest of the chats. I'll respond to them uh, as necessary. And then we will go over to twitch.tv forward slash Ricada Law for some Nords Arise. All right. Kiwi goes live, says, I ended a rough night at work with your stream. Uh, Megadeth's A Tout Le Monde Belgian Ale. A Tout Le Monde Belgian Ale. I know Nick's not a beer guy, but this is amazing if you love beer. And Scott Pilgrim on Switch. So it's safe to say everything is all right. Perfect, man. Good. Night of Hope X says, everybody make fun of Monica. Send me your, your best she's a horse joke. Eddie Most 1000 says, I was able to pick up a Talisker 10 year in a Macallan Edition 3 due to a new promotion at work. I highly recommend both, especially the Macallan if you're able to find it at your local liquor store. Crusader Saracen says, It's often said that wages are better than charity handouts. If you were Jeff Bezos' ex wife and just got $20 billion, what would you do with that money to make the world better? Uh, I would start a company, but that's me. Um, 300 pound single mom says, I don't date a man unless he makes seven figures in a six, five. I don't need to bring anything to the table. I am the whole table snaps fingers and shakes head head like a sassy black woman. I am the whole table. Okay. Night of hope, uh, says we're actually living in a non-functioning society like Venezuela or Zimbabwe. The only reason we don't know it yet is because our elites haven't managed to decide what the means for the, what that means for the future. The Democrat version of the CCP is taking off as we speak. Uh, let's see. Uh, Knight of Hope says, Yes, I think humans are just capable of horrific things in general, but it's important to realize that normal people can justify these things. When they tell our military to drop the bombs on us, they get to die too. More than half will do it. Uh, Susan's mud flap says in terms of alleged illegality, how do the so-called hateful and threatening comments found in parlors posts compare to the hateful and threatening speech that could slash can be heard in the protests and riot live streams on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, etc. Uh, they're tame, tame by comparison. Bitcoin, he says this Pol politifact breakdown would be a good clip. Maybe. Maybe. All right, uh, Kiyotomi Chutanichi says, totaled the car this afternoon, but kiddo and I have no serious injuries. It has been a day, but have a fiver to make yours a bit brighter. Jilly girl. Jilly girl! I'm glad to hear you're okay, and you and the kiddo are safe. Uh, thank goodness for that. Michael Rowland says, you're fine. We get it. Thanks. Paul D says, do you have any plans to upload YouTube alternatives? Discord and Patreon are also on the censorship bandwagon. 
Yes, I do. I do. Uh, as stated in my announcement, uh, the plans are unauthorized.tv, uh, which will hopefully become a Patreon alternative. And also uh, something like probably Utreon or something like that. <laughs> Cindy Henderson, what was that comment? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god what was that you're killing me uh hold on one second Jennifer Signs of Life from YouTube chat wants me to watch this video from Rumble. Uh, no, not tonight. I'll watch it and look back on it. Bad Vibe says, America's song Horse with No Name has no name because they don't want to admit they rode Monica. I rode in the desert on a horse named Monica. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, let's be BFFs. I'm with you, Cindy. Let's be BFFs. After that comment, I don't know how I could not be. Dex Terminax says, hashtag pearl necklaces for Kamala. Stop it. You stop it, Dex. Overton Windex says, going to go into debt for a new car or house. Now's the time. Inflation is outrunning interest rates. Yep. Uh, Anders uh, Andrew War Snowboard says, are any of you guys in South Florida? I'll be there for five days soon and can't wait. Any tips appreciated? Angry Baneling says, my review of the water I'm drinking. Aged two hours after pour, colder than room temperature at the moment. Taste? What taste? And hits my throat with a coolness. Thank you. Uh, Michael Rowland says, Pappy Van Winkle for the win. I've never had Pappy. It's so hard to find. Uh, Automata says, don't lie. Swallow with purpose is your pitch for a, for a ghetto gaggers tagline for when they sponsor your show. <laughs> Man, I would, I, would, uh, I would really think that guy would be interesting on the show, don't you? Like, here you have someone treading the very edges, the very edges of free speech and expression. Uh, whew. the Nikkor man says World War Three is happening, and I hope you guys are drafted. <laughs> okay. Uh, Karn says thanks so much. May Kermit bless all your chats. Oh, thank you, Karn. Much appreciated. Andrew Wilhelm says here's my vote to name a whiskey. Nords arise. Uh, let's see. Uh, Padre Speak says, thank you for being white. You're welcome, but I didn't put any effort into it. Uh, Railer Swim. Railer Swim says, John Sullivan didn't act alone. Video shows multiple Antifa agitators prepping the morning of the 6th. Uh, Nakano Hitori says, how do you get past the smell of whiskey? Oh, you just have to not smell it right when you're drinking it. Cheech, but that's a long time. Uh, Skeet Need says, Nick, you look like a YouTuber named Mr. Enter. Not only that, you both are Polish, but are also on the spectrum too. Only difference is that you have a knife nose to backstab people with. <laughs> Jason McConnell says, my girlfriend keeps chastising me for moaning while watching Key West webcams where everyone is maskless. No, that's where you got to go. You got to go. You got to go get a trip to Florida, man. Don't be a Florida man, but get a trip to Florida, comma, man. Because uh, it's a reminder of what freedom tastes like. John Russell says, I keep hearing about QAnon. Could you explain what QAnon even is? I looked it up on Wikipedia, but I don't trust that site. 
QAnon is... I'm going to explain this wrong, but bear with me for what my idea of, of what QAnon is. QAnon is a person or group of people who claim to be government insiders and have access to knowledge of, quote unquote, the plan, whatever the plan may be. They have uh, indicated through posts primarily on 4chan um, events that would transpire or have transpired and uh, suggested reasons for doing so. Their credibility is questionable. Some things they've gotten right, other things they may not have, and some people believe them and some people don't. Uh, that's, that's what that is. But due to the nature of it being anonymous and potentially multiple people, it's hard to verify who Q even is. But that's, that's it. Uh, Cormoran says, Jack looks like he smells of cheap wine and stale urine. He's already set for Twitter's inevitable Trumpless fall. And that stock price is a fallen. Arrogant Australian socialist of Victoria says, have a different opinion. Reported. I did see Alex Jones ripping into QAnon. Yes, it was, it was glorious. Brandosaurus Rex says, last year and this year have taken their toll on me. Can't take much more. Today, I got the news that Abby Shapiro is getting a breast reduction. What? They took away the Kazar Milkers, Nick. Game over, man. Abby? Abby, talk to me first. Abby, talk to me first. Why am I supposed to go to Pompeo's Twitter? I don't know what that means. This one? From Pompeo? A lot about a nation from its friends. We embrace the only nation in the Middle East that respects democracy, the rule of law, human rights, and freedom. Long may it ever be so. That picture. What are you trying to say? Secretary of State account. Oh, just a second. Uh, what's his Mike Pompeo's personal account that we're looking at here? I may not be able to fit in my battle dress uniform anymore, but leading CIA and State Department, I constantly focus on protecting our great military and all Americans. This one? Pompeo on cancel culture? What am I supposed to lick up? Go to the other one. I was just on the other one. Okay, here's the one with, with the Jewish peoples. Here's the one with these peoples. Faith matters, history matters, democracy matters. Thank you, Netanyahu, for all you do. Taxpayers deserve basic truths. Palestinians. We suspended funding to UNRWA. No shortage of anti-Semites online. Title six of the Civil Rights Act to protect Jewish American students. Man, like Pompeo is 
hitting the Jew thing pretty hard. Why, what, what am I trying to do here? Second pick? Who are these people? I don't know who these people are. <laughs> I don't know what this is. What am I looking at? Just fucking say it in the chat, please. <laughs> Oh, God. They're all George Soros. <laughs> JFK Jr.? Even if it is JFK Jr., who cares? <laughs> Okay. Whatever. I don't I it doesn't matter to me. Uh All right. He is dead? Oh, okay. Oh, I see. That's it. Okay. <laughs> well, whoever that is isn't dead even if it's him. Uh, Randy Randerson says PP and ACLU fought to keep the marriage age zero in California in 2017. Yes. Yes. California's marriage age is still birth. The Nick man says BLM slash Antifa is fighting world war three, uh, over a wave. Okay. Dragon's Treasure says it's 12.30. I should have been in bed three hours ago. Oh, and also Nick's nose is 10 days long. Seriously, why TF am I awake? Death Trout says thought workout stream. You can call it Let's Get Itchy. Look, I already promised thought yoga at 20,000 Twitter followers. Nuxu Cow says AOC or Brie Larson, who gets the big D? Uh, AOC. Talix001 says, hey there, don't you fish your hunt up there? I don't. I don't really fish or hunt. Ira Gershwin says, Jaden X YouTube channel, eighth most recent vid watch. Now, uh, we covered that. Uh, Ira Gershwin also says, Jaden X YouTube channel, fifth vid leading charge before gun. T. He says, it would be cheaper for death penalty if we use hanging and guillotine instead of expensive ways of execution. The expense of the death penalty actually comes in all of the appeals. That's the expense of the death penalty. Um, abnormally average nick's a city boy i mean i've lived in the country for a decade uh over a decade now um the reason i don't fish is because i don't like to sit outside in the cold uh the reason i don't hunt is because i'm have never been taught how to field dress a deer that's the only reason uh i'd happily do it i just need i just need someone to demonstrate it to me unfortunately my grandpa passed before i could hunt with him Blaine 20 says the actor who played Screech on Saved by the Bell has been diagnosed with stage four cancer. Uh, yeah, I know. And I don't care about that. Uh, zero SMSS says, do you think there's an argument to be made for a felony murder charge against Sullivan and Ashley Babbitt's death? His actions kind of led to her death. Uh, possibly, but they're not pursuing it. So it's not really worth speculating on. Talix 001 says aligned against Trump right now. Are you high? Uh, again, no, I'm not high. They are, again, they're they're in their ascendancy right now. The mainstream media uh, is aligned with Congress and the new president. They're at their maximum power. Ira Gershwin says, never mind, Mother Super Chats. Jaden X, fifth video was it. Big Red Bear says, notice how many people who storm buildings in riots tend to be complete losers, whether they're right or left wing, cut from the same cloth, losers. Viden the Cold One says, did you respond to that Legal Eagle video thing? I have not. Monica's personal effing fiance says, stop harassing my fiance, chatter, face the remote. Elliot Hacker says, why is everyone so dumb? Why, why? Timothy Reaper says, Monica Real walks into a bar. The bartender asks, why the long face? Your Aeternus says, someone will do the biggest fart in the world today. All right. Oh, Tofu Hazard says, I'm late. Chances on Parlor receiving any restitution from Amazon. Low. And it'll be too late. Uh, the judge has indicated 
potentially that they're not interested in granting the injunction, although they haven't technically ruled on it yet. We'll see what happens, but they seem to indicate today they're not going to grant the preliminary injunction or the temporary restraining order. So we will see what happens with that. CJ says they're the ones taking the Shapiro twins. Talix 001 says Dem's trying to turn the sixth into Beer Hall Putsch. Uh, Knight of Hope says, I love you all very much. Happy to live or die with you. Almost as much as Monica loves sleeping, standing up, swatting flies or having blankets thrown over her. <laughs> Yashkin says, hey, Nick, for Bitcoin donations, get a domain from unstoppabledomain.com. They're pretty cheap and you can use your company name for the domain or at least look into it for the future is usually only 40 bucks for a lifetime. They also do other crypto coins. Uh, I have a MetaMask wallet. I think I can somehow achieve crypto that way. Malik Foxen says, what's funny, that's funny, if that's an accurate description of QAnon, feel like my liberal friend who I got into an argument about optics when it comes to all the voter fraud claims pretty much was way off when he described my stance aligning with QAnon types. I don't know, man. I, I'm probably a bad describer of QAnon, but that's, that's what I understand of them. What are your thoughts about Republicans by passing the metal detectors at the Capitol? Uh, I don't care. I don't care about the charades of Congress. And I don't think that Congress people are at risk from other congressmen. The most dangerous person to Congress in history was Andrew Jackson when he would beat them with a fucking cane. So I don't actually care about metal detectors at the Congress building. Ugh, we got to prevent. We got to be- prevent. Let's be honest. Republican congressmen from bringing guns because Republican congressmen are going to shoot congressmen is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Josh Armstrong says, just joined in. Not sure what I missed. Any update on the Vic case or have I been living under a rock? You have. There's no update on the Vic case. September 22nd, the appeals court took the Vic case under consideration. Sometime between September 22nd and nine months later, on a Thursday, most likely, we can expect a ruling in the Vic case. Uh, other than that, there's just nothing to update. Automata says, but AOC scared others will tweet her location. <laughs> sure she is. All right, guys. That's the show for tonight. That's the show for tonight. Let's go. <laughs> I don't know. Some pretty dumb people work in Congress. All of them. Everyone in Congress is the dumbest person in the room. Uh, get rid of them. Um, All right, guys. Let's the show. I'm going to play the outro. I'm going to go over to Twitch. Thank you all for making this impromptu uh, hack job of a show into something enjoyable. I hope you had a good time for this show. Uh, Like I said, I wasn't really able to put together, um, you know, the kind of show that I normally would. So, uh... I think it worked out, though. I think we had a good time. We'll talk more, of course, tomorrow. And uh, until then, guys, peace. Peace. He drinks a fair bit, but you realize that It just helps get his noggin jogging along With his glass by his side and his kids asleep tight We'll hear some lost planning tonight With his microphone muted, we'll laugh at this boomer Until he explains it's all part of the plan Watch his face become redder as he becomes better Raging at idiots from Twitter and Erland From the white shores of Nantes Hills of Glen Livet. There's no one who explains the law better than Nick. So pull out a glass for the ones who have passed. Make the law what we have now. Oh, he.
His lady is fair and she handles herself with the grace of one who has borne many children. As the wife of a lawman, she makes sure that he has the time and the place to provide for them there. So pour out an art bag, bow more of the frog. The spirits flow as the ones who get on every lord. So pour out a glass for the tea post on Twitter as we hear lost planning tonight. From the white shores of Nam to the hills of Glen Levitt, there's no one who explains the thought better than Nick. So pour out a glass for the ones who have passed to make the law what we have now. Oh, the guests are all plentiful, from Doug T to Drexel. They bring their perspective and spice to the mix. But the reason we're here and the one that we cheer is the one who is showcasing us his career. Shores of Nam to the hills of Glen Limit. There's no one who explains the thought better than Nick. So pour out a glass for the ones who have passed.